nature and the essence of speech, of prophecy, is feminine. Every major world religion that you know of has borrowed, let's keep it real, has outright stolen what it is that women have given to the world. And so now you've got these men walking around in priestly robes like dresses, trying to fool the spirits. That's really what that is, y'all. If, if nobody told you that before, I'm here to tell you that today. The work of our process is to bring the knowledge of these things to the minds of women so that they understand, as our slogan says, that women need not be empowered. We're not here to, to preach some sort of women's lib doctrine. I'm here to tell you that you are the very nature and the essence of power itself, which is why in the oldest religions on the face of this planet, the essence of power is represented by the feminine form. We study the ancient scriptures that uplift feminine divinity. Our most favorite scripture from the Shakti Sangama Tantra opens with woman is the creator of the universe. The universe is her form. She is the true form of the body, no matter what form she takes, whether in the form of a man or a woman, is the superior form. Each and every human being for the first trimester of your life began as female. Biology now suggests to us that the earliest homo sapiens on the face of this planet were all female. There was no men. You're scratching your head. But some of you came up in the church and you were ready to believe in an immaculate conception to give birth to a God. Why cannot you believe that from the essence of the womb of triple darkness, the face of feminine divinity looked upon itself and beheld its own reflection and called itself forth, calling land for it to stand on? The very nature of speech, I say again, is feminine. The mouth is an orifice like the womb. You know, in some cultures, they speak of women that have the gap tooth. They say of her, she speaks the truth. I'm here to tell you, not only are you divine, but the, 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 the meaning of divination is that you are an oracle. It is your body that is this oracle. When misogyny took hold on the face of this planet and men began to exalt this idea of a father God and obliterate the idea of a mother God, one of the first things that they had to do was they had to discredit the oracle. The oracle is you. The meaning of the word oracle, oracle is aura, to speak. Kle, clef, keys the keys to speech. Now, you might be wondering, what am I saying is the nature of this oracle? It is your body and its cyclical nature. It is that thing that you have been taught to come to despise so much, the monthly period. In speech, in language, in the communication of ideas, we say that the end point that we are making when we're speaking or when we're writing is a period. It is a definitive point. The period itself is expressive of a moment in time of which you are the mother of. Time is not some linear idea that we've been taught in Western culture, but a circular one. It is repetitive. It bespeaks the fact that we are eternal. This eternal idea of who it is we are and what it is we are is expressed in the cyclical nature of a woman's body. And women understanding this, feeling the shifts and the changes in their bodies, which are also in tune with these cycles, began to speak oracles. The speaking of oracles comes in images. As a visual artist, as a symbolist, my work is to take what the right side of the brain, which is what makes us universal, which is what makes us congregative, which is what makes us able to sit down and put things together in a creative process. 
to live in harmony with each other, which is the basis of, of the most ancient civilizations that we know of, such, such as ancient Egypt, which Brother Nuhari wrote about. And he will tell you, it, when you look at this book, for those of you who have just gotten it, it is this kind of thinking that is what gave birth to civilization. So when I speak of feminine divinity, I'm not just speaking of the biological sense of woman, because there's a woman in every man, just as there's a man in every woman. These opposites exist to be able to produce what we see as the balance. Yes? And so, again, I have such short time to be with you, and I'm so, you have to understand that I'm very, very excited about my work. I live, eat, breathe and sleep this. I grew up watching my mother go without this. I'm the son of a Pentecostal minister, the grandson of a Pentecostal minister, grandnephew, cousin, you name it. I come from a long line of preachers. I preach a different doctrine, however, than the one that I was raised in because I saw the misogyny. And I understand that there's something that has to be done about that process. There's an undoing that must be done with what it is that we have suffered on this planet. In most of our organizations, in most of our traffickings, we find, again, that women have been paid lip service to. Unfortunately, even in some of our own Afrocentric organizations, they are only paid lip service to. Their money is taken. Their time and their effort is taken. Their bodies and their emotional commitments are taken through a manipulative process that started by dividing women against each other. So many things, so little time, y'all. My work with Goddess Herstory and Ms. Jennifer Lane is to restore these ancient ideas to build and to establish a place where the name of the goddess can be remembered for all time. A place where women can come and feel safe. That the time that they are spending, they can turn towards a feminine reflection of themselves and be in the presence of men who, when they look at, at them, see the same. Men who are worthy of the title God and who don't just Boast it. That's work. You can find our work on the website. If you don't remember this, come and see us at our table outside, please. Uh, Goddessherstory.org. That is our organization, which is a collective of men, men of goodwill towards women and women who organized ourselves as an artist collective. Artistry is the first form of priesthood because it is visionary, because it gets past all that other junk in your head and it gets right to the point, because seeing is believing, is it not? And a picture is worth a million words, so they say. Our ancient Egyptian ancestors used the hieroglyphic writing as a means of bypassing all of the verbal chatter of the head and taking you to the essence, to the point. That's a feminine approach for much of which they were criticized by those who tried to inherit and take over their system. Oh, did I say inherit? Oh, that's right, stolen. It is time for things to be restored. On our website, you will find that we do workshops that deal with the cyclical nature of your being, how to journal in accordance with the moon, which is an art that women have lost. A control over the understanding of your body begins to come into play, which you have to understand. When women come together as a collective for anything, they begin to cycle together. And in that, there is power. Women were not put out of religious societies and out of social orders because their menstrual cycles came. They took it as a retreat. But here in Western culture, they send you to the job. And there is a reason because your blood is so precious and it is so powerful that you are feeding the machine while you're going to work on your cycle. How many of you know that? They, don't, they won't tell you this. It's a very powerful, powerful thing, this thing called blood, your blood. 
conversations could be had about it. So the nature of this is taught. Young women are actually brought in and given a basic mini initiation into what it is to know themselves and to celebrate their moon. The monthly flowering is a sacred time. 